What if you and I unify in you and I D Y? What if you and I unify in you and I D Y? What if you and I unify? Hey, what's going on, people? You're watching the Unity Sessions live on TLD TV. We're joined in great today by Rejoice Abuda. How are you doing over there? Yeah, I'm doing good. Not too bad. Summer is good and everything's great. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was interested because you know we haven't spoken like formally before. I always wondered like yeah. if your vibe would be similar to the laid back chill vibe of the single as well. I wasn't <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> yeah, we thank God for that. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So yeah, I'm sure you've had a long and interesting journey. I mean, how did you come to Jesus in the first place? Yeah, so I grew up in a family that I've always kind of known about Jesus. Um, I've always been knowing about God and things like that and um, I was just blessed to have like parents as well that could um, cheer me up in the scriptures in the bibles it was more of the time that Wednesday I was in church Friday I was in church like Sunday I was in church always knowing about God um, so as I was a child I've always kind of known about the scriptures I think what brought me closer to God was just like through various experiences in life that I realized that I couldn't rely on my own strength on my own power um one of their experiences was even recently back in 2019 um where I just felt like the enemy was just trying to come for me at all levels, <laughs> um, be it like my health, um, academically, emotionally, like I was just down and I just couldn't rely on my own strength, on my own power. And that was really the point that I realized. And I was in uni as well, away from parents, away from basically every other kind of influence. So I just realized that, um, you know, this relationship between God, like it's a serious one. And it was really God that just grasped me in that moment and just gave me so much joy and so much peace. And I just had such a solid reassurance that it would be okay. Um, so that was just when I, you know, had a personal relationship with my father because I knew that this life, I couldn't do it without him. <laughs> so I just got closer to God on a personal level. So yeah that's really when my journey fully began. See, that's that's awesome. And we're having an accent over here. How how do you end up in Scotland, please? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I was born and raised in Glasgow. And yeah. yeah, that's just, yeah, that's just how I came. <laughs> yeah, so was it, was it mums and pops that made the trip first and... Yeah, so then they've been here for quite a while. They've just been like staying and working here. So then they had me and my two older brothers here as well. So yeah, born and raised in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. I, I need to know what your loyalty is like. If, if Nigeria <laughs> and Scotland are playing each other in a football match, who are you cheering for? Oh, Nigeria all the way. Okay. <laughs> Come on, yeah. <laughs> oh my days, that's a quick response too, no hesitation. All right, now we know, now we know. The Nigerians in the building will be glad to hear it too, I'm sure. Yes, Nigeria, no they carry last. We love it. <laughs> yeah. So what's the vibes like over there in Scotland then? Like, um, first of all, from a Christian perspective, do you feel like you're in a Christian community or? Yeah, so in Scotland, they've made like, I guess every religion quite free, like you're free to practice it, I'm free to live out your religion and things like that. So being in Scotland, it's been quite good, um, um, especially growing up in a solid church community um, where your faith is encouraged, you're very much encouraged to, you know, dig deeper and seek a deeper relationship with God. And I thank God so much because even being in uni, he brought me around Christian friends, like a good Christian community that I can seek guidance, seek prayer, seek help. Um, so yeah, like in Scotland, the I guess Christian vibe is quite good. Like they really allow it to be um, practiced and cultivated, cultivated and spoken about. So yeah. Nice. And do you stay in Scotland for uni? Yes, Scotland yeah. all the way. <laughs> Where was it? Um, Edinburgh Uni actually. Okay, nice. So yeah. yeah, born in Glasgow, but came to Edinburgh for uni. Yeah, pretty well renowned. And you ended up going into law, yeah. Yes, I did. What was yeah. the pull? What was the pull? 
Um, so I think ever since I was younger, I always just had the desire to help people. Um, just growing up, I felt like human rights was a very big thing that I was um, very determined about helping in. Um, I just wanted to help in every way possible. And of course, being an ethnic minority growing up in Britain and, you know, experiencing racism firsthand, experiencing discrimination firsthand, um, I just knew that once I got older, I just wanted to be in the position that other people didn't have to go as bad, like go through as bad experiences as I did. And I just wanted to be in the position that um, people wouldn't be disadvantaged just because of, you know, the color of their skin and just because of um, even the religion they choose to practice. So I wanted to be somebody that, um, you know, the law degree will really help me to um, help others, yeah, and help ethnic minorities. So, yeah, that's what got me into law. Yeah, that's nice. So do you know what you're going to specialize in? What type of law? Um, not quite, but as the Lord leads, I believe <laughs> I'm going into, I'm really interested in media law because I feel like that covers everything from discrimination to international law to EU law, and it covers quite a lot. So I've not solidified, but yeah, I think it's going down that route. But again, as the Lord leads. <laughs> yeah, that'd be quite cool. I always try and keep a good network of defence solicitors just in case as well. So. Yeah, I've got that <laughs> so much. <laughs> just like, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. I have so many jobs already lined up for me. So, uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So you're in the midst of doing this, you're studying, which has its own pressures and everything else. Like, yes. How did music start to become like, I'm not just going to do this casually, this mm. is going to become a real professional part of my life? Yeah, so... I believe I've always had the desire to like write music and um, I just felt like that was such a strong area that God was calling me to throughout my whole life. And um, I remember in December, actually very recently, just last December, um, I just had such, <laughs> uh, you know, spark of an idea. It was almost like a light bulb moment. And it was very random because it was when I was coming out of the bathroom. <laughs> There's something like slightly, I don't know, very spiritual about like the bathroom and just them areas where you're just alone. And yeah, I just kind of had the idea, like, why don't I release a single um, on my birthday, which is actually the day that I announced um, that the single was out and everything. And I don't know why, but like, as soon as I got that idea, I just felt such a backing and such an encouragement that, yeah, this is what God wants me to do. Like, I think this is one of the first ideas I've ever had that I had a solid conviction that I could actually do it, that God really was in this. And yeah, I knew from the jump, like, this is an idea from God. Like, I would have taken it to the end. I would have seen the product of it. And it's something that God wants himself. Um, so, yeah, I remember just... Around about the December time, that was, of course, when exams and deadlines and everything hit. Um, so I remember it was just kind of like general stress of life <laughs> and just applying for different things um, back in December. And I realized that I was just mentally not in the best place um, just because I had so much anxiety on me, so much stress on me. Um, just to like perform, you know, and to do good and studies and things like that. And um, behind all of that, I still had the strong conviction that, you know, music is something that I want to go into. And this song, like, I felt like God was in it. I didn't even know what it would sound like, but I just knew that God wanted me to do it. Um, I ran February time, which was my birthday. So, um, I remember it was just kind of a quiet time, um, just kind of like your everyday quiet time. And um, I just sat there and I prayed to God. I was like, God, I know that you want me to release this sound. I know that you want me to release this song. Um, and I know that you want me to bless others through the song. Um, so I just sat there and I was like, okay, God, give me the lyrics. <laughs> and um, I already kind of had the tune in my head, um, just kind of the acoustic vibe that you can still kind of hear it um, in the actual track. Um, I had that in my head. So as I was sitting down to, 
you know, think over what I wanted to sing about. I just kind of heard the melody and the verse come in at the same time almost. So it was really God that was in all of that. Um, so the first verse is, the Lord is my light and salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And that actually comes from Psalm 27 verses one. Um, and it's, kind of relates to my personal story between like me and God um, because I feel like fear was a really big thing that the enemy would use to kind of distract me from what I was meant to do. I think primarily it was fear of man, like fear of how people would perceive me, um, of how people would view me, um, just being this like tr crazy church girl, crazy for Jesus. <laughs> and I was just um, afraid of like, critique you know of people um not like my voice and things like that it was just about um yeah how people would view me it was a lot about self and I realized that um through music and stepping into music that was like one of the boldest steps that God empowered me to take just so that you know, fear of mind would just like break off of me. And mm -hmm. I feel like even till this day, that's something that God is really, really working um, for me to, um, you know, break through it. And by God's grace, like I'm getting there, I'm almost there. <laughs> and um, he's just given me that confidence to, um, you know, not be afraid of what people think or what people perceive about me. So yeah, that was the first verse that I, um sang about and the second one was kind of like when the enemy came to steal all my joy you raised a standard against him and that actually stemmed from Isaiah chapter 59 I believe um the original um kind of words in the bible was when the enemy came in like a flood you raised the standard against him um but to me it was I kind of personalized it um to steal all my joy because joy is a very big part of my character. It's a very big part of my person. Um, it's in my name. <laughs> and yeah, I just loved um, bringing joy, bringing laughter to people. I love laughing myself. Like I laugh like all the time. <laughs> and um, yeah, I feel like that was such a big um, strengthening factor in just me as a person. But I feel like that was also something that the enemy was actively trying to like take away from my life. So um, significant moments in my life where, you know, everything was just kind of going left. <laughs> and um, yeah, there was definitely certain points where I just kind of felt like I wasn't really adding that much value to life, um, which was a big lie from the enemy. Um, Cause he just kind of made me feel, feel like um, nobody really cared and things like that. Um, so I felt like, everything that was making me happy and just God himself making me happy during them times it was just like the enemy was actively trying to come against that and he was actively trying to take away my smile take away my joy so I felt like I had to strive to be happy and strive to be joyful like it wasn't a natural thing to me when it <clears throat> sorry when it usually like came naturally um so yeah, I just thank God so much because in them moments, God literally grabbed me, like he grabbed me. I remember one time, um, again, back in 2019, it was literally at a conference that God literally just grasped my heart. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it was literally the speaker that was speaking straight into my life because he was talking about how a lot of the times <clears throat> we have burdens from um, life, burdens of academics, burdens of health, burdens of finances, and we just have so much burdens on us that we want to be happy, we want to lift up our hands in worship, but you know the burdens of life and the burdens that the enemy has put on you it's so much and it's weighing down your joy it's weighing down your peace um but the moment that you cast down them burdens and release it that's when you can truly you know worship God and just give your life to him and hand your life over to him and in that moment I felt such a strong sense of love and such a strong sense of joy like peace and it was like one that I couldn't even like describe and yeah that's just how 
God restored my joy and I'm still um, like the happy, joyful person. Sometimes I just wake up in the morning and then I just find a reason to smile and I just like do a little dance or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized that that's such a big area of my life that um, God has saved me so much from it being lost. Um, so yeah, God definitely raised the standard against him as I put in my song. Um, so throughout the whole song, it was literally just about me and my relationship with God. And yet you turn my mourning into dancing, my sorrow into joy. Um, that's literally what God done in my life. Um, so that I'm not, um, you know, stressing. I'm not worried because I know that God has my back. Do you, in you, feel like you feel things more deeply? Like if you get what mm -hmm. I mean. So in the context, right? So um a lot of people that i've come across the the ones the ones that feel intense joy including myself at times it feels as though you're just more susceptible to life so your highs are really high and your lows are really low would, would yes. you put yourself in that category or not really oh yes i would say yeah the times where i was low i was like low <laughs> like i had hit rock bottom and I think even in their moments God kind of taught me to redefine what I thought was joy so I felt my like my joy was kind of based off of what was happening in my life so if my life was good if it was all fine if it was great then I would be happy I'd be like yay but if one bad thing happened I'd just be like <laughs> like I'd just be <laughs> I wouldn't have like I would just not be in the best kind of situation emotionally. Um, so I think when I hit my lowest of the lows, um, that's when God really taught me like joy isn't circumstantial. Joy isn't based off of um, what is happening in your life. Like joy is um, an everlasting joy. It's something that you can't even describe. It's something that is only from above. Um, I remember a scripture that just encourages me till this day is that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And sometimes joy has to literally be a choice, you know, because life can be life and bad things can happen. But it's just like, no matter what happens, I know that God is my strength. I know that God will take me through this. I know that the same God that has been preserving me um, throughout my whole life will take me to the end. And that is literally where I get my joy from because nothing that the enemy can do can like break that joy that I have because it's one that is rooted in heavenly places. It's one that is rooted in um, Christ himself. And that is nothing that is something that the enemy just can't take from me um so yeah I would say that I have experienced very high highs and very low lows but in the low lows God kind of redefined my perception of joy so that I'm always kind of like on a steady joy level if that makes sense yeah that makes sense I mean and how did you find the reaction I know you said you were worried beforehand how did you find the reaction in the end oh uh, like to the song yeah um, yeah, I think every time somebody asks me this question, I always get slightly speechless because till this day, I'm just like very in awe of the reaction. Um, I think because it was my first single, I just didn't really know what to expect. Um, so I knew it was something that excited me and it made me very happy. Every time I listened to the song, like I was just so happy and I was like this is God this can only be God um so even from my announcement because I had like a bit of anxiety beforehand like oh how would people receive it all this kind of stuff but yeah I'll actually just tell you the whole process so I'm um, building up to my announcement which is like I believe 6 p.m or something like that um I remember that I had just kind of made a prayer to God that um, yeah, God, I just want you to be the one that advertises this because I know that you were the one that inspired me for this idea. I know that there's somebody that you want to reach um, out. Yeah, there's somebody that you want to reach out to and somebody that you want to bless through this track. So yeah, please bless them because I didn't know how to advertise it. I just didn't know. Um, so I made the announcement and, and as soon as I did, like it was just 
love, <laughs> like immediate love. And um, let me not lie, immediately it made me emotional. Like it made me start crying. I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. <laughs> so I actually turned off my phone for a second and then I just like got down on my knees in my usual dramatic self way. And then I was just like worshiping and praising God. I was just like blasting music in my ears for what I thought was like 10 minutes. Turned out it was like two hours. Oh my and then, God. <laughs> I was just like <laughs> worshiping God, like praising God. I was like, God, just so good, all that kind of stuff. I was loving it. And then, yeah, I realized I did not, I wasn't actually checking my phone for all that time. So, yeah, came back to my phone <laughs> and I was literally shocked because it was just so much love again and so much um just reassurance that yeah God was the one that was advertising this because my Instagram was like freezing. It was like I didn't know what was happening <laughs> and then I was just getting so many encouraging messages and calls and texts and yeah it was just till this day <laughs> I'm just so in awe of like how God used that to move in people's lives and how God is still using it and I just can't wait till to see like where he's going to take me next <laughs> yeah I mean do you know what, what is the next step you feel like for you musically yeah, so I feel like definitely in terms of new music, yeah, um, that is something that um I've definitely been actively working with God just to see, you know, God, what do you want me to release? What new sounds do you want in the kingdom? Um, just like uplifting music, encouraging music. Um, so I feel like God is still taking me through that journey of you know songwriting and being more confident in my style of music um so I feel like that's the next step just kind of like finding out where um God wants to take me in terms of like genre and stuff like that and yeah I think a step at a time getting closer to God do like doing my worship and stuff yeah I think that's the step that God's taking me on Nice. Do you, do you feel any pressure with that? Is there any pressure you feel like to make it better than the original? Or... Yeah. So do you know? I kind of had that thought. Like it wouldn't be. It wasn't strong, but I was just kind of like, oh, <laughs> because since a lot of people were watching, and to be fair, they still are watching. And then I've just kind of gotten like little messages like, oh, when's the next one? When's the album coming out? Like when's the new single coming out? And I'll be like, oh and oh like I'm not oh <laughs> it's all God you know so I did have that brief thought like okay I kind of want to make it better but then in them stages I felt like I had to catch like my desire like my personal desire and like release it with okay God what do you want in this situation because if I come out with another song and it happens to be better then that's all God um but yeah it's just kind of um, my prayer right now is that I just want God to do exactly what he wants to do in my songs in um, even the way I worship play like, I just want it to be very uplifting and bring people close to God the same way it's brought me close to God so yeah nice I mean if if you weren't doing music so I know how it is I think um as Christians, we often have the kind of the baseline nine to five thing, mm -hmm. you on your Lord journey, that kind of thing. But we often seek out these kind of opportunities to be fruitful. So yeah. I'm just curious, if it wasn't music, what other avenue do you think you might find to be able to express those thoughts and feelings? Ooh, so I think um, it was more so related to, I actually wanted to be a journalist as well, mm -hmm. um, which steps into my interest of media law and things like that. Um, so I think um, journalism, it kind of helps to touch on very um, big issues just in society and things like that. So, and I think that God is so strong in um, like law, just law in general, like the basis of law. Um, that's why I was quite drawn to it. So I think I would just be, um, you know, a lawyer <laughs> um, working actively against like human rights and discrimination and stuff like that. And yeah, I still think that um, God is calling me to that as well. And I love the mix between law and music <laughs> because it's kind of like expressing God um, 
and kind of like the voice of justice that God brings in law, but also expressing the love of God and the peace and patience of God through my music. So it's a lovely collaboration. Yeah, 100%. Even just the fact that Psalms, which is, you know, the like the, as musical as it's going to get from the Bible, yes. kind of thing that led you into your first single as well. That's awesome even by itself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, and but before the end, I always like to ask people, how how can anyone who's watching this, how could they pray for you? Oh, how can they pray for me? So I think just that the will of God will be done in my music <laughs> and the will of God will be done in my life and my family's life. And yeah, I just want to also take this time to like encourage people um, if if I'm okay with doing that. Um, yes, yeah, so me also being quite introverted, I wasn't really too sure like how to come into the music scene. And I just kind of believed this lie that I was too shy <laughs> to come into music or that I was too young to come into music. But honestly, I just want to encourage anybody out there that is struggling to, um, you know, accept the will of God for their life or they feel like they're too shy or they feel like um they're not good enough like if somebody like me that was struggling <laughs> to come out or to even um you know interact with other people that I didn't know um if I <laughs> under the influence of God can just like help somebody and reach out to someone and release this sound like you can do it too keep going keep pushing don't give up and um, God is so strong in whatever you want to do even if it's just a business even if it's um being your own CEO entrepreneur if it's spoken word and stuff like that God is so much in that so just keep going keep pushing don't give up um keep seeking God in whatever you're doing and I can assure you you will find him and once you find him it'll be so amazing <laughs> so yeah just keep going and don't give up yeah, awesome Rejoice thank you so much for coming on hey make sure you go check out the music we'll get that link for yeah. you below you've been watching the unity sessions on TLD TV till next time take care out there <laughs>